Have you ever wondered if you're using the right lookup formula in Microsoft Excel? Well, in today's video, we're going to discover the four main types of lookup formulas that are available to you, from lookup to hlookup, vlookup, and the newer xlookup, and which used cases you would use which one for. Now, together with that, we're going to have a look at the common errors that you might face, how to avoid these, and how to make sure you get clean data. If you'd like to follow along, there is a link in the description below. And without further ado, let's dive into it. First up, we have the lookup function. And the best use case for a lookup function is when you have an array which has an ascending value in it. So in this example, we are going to add the commission based on a salary threshold. And it works quite well if you don't want to use an if statement. So here we go. Let's type in here 35,000 as a salary that we want to look up and we want to see the commission from this table. So we simply type in equals lookup and open bracket here. What's the lookup value? The salary. And this is a simple one where you can simply just take two of the columns here at the actual array and close up the argument right here. And that provides us the $1,000. Now, this only returns the nearest value to what the commission is. So let's type in 36,000 here. Let's see what happens. It remains 1,000. But if we get to 40,000, you can see that it's changed over to $2,000. Now, if we type above 70,000, so let's type in 80,000. Let's go to the salary, type in 80,000, and you can see that anything above the 70,000 will also get a commission of $6,000. However, you need to know that the lowest value, it won't return anything below the lowest threshold value. So let's type in $30,000 right here, and you can see it returns an NA. And we will figure out how to fix this later. Okay, so we have to make sure that everything we have as a value is above the first value and everything needs to be in an ascending order for this lookup function to work correctly. Now let's go over to our table and let's go lookup formula right here and select our salary, comma, select our range and let's close the formula right here and let's drag this down. Now you can see we have a number of different errors here. And why did that happen? That's because we haven't locked the range right here. So as you notice, if you just go down, you can see that the range has moved down. So the golden rule of lookup values is to make sure that you lock and fix the ranges by using F4 to get the dollar signs in. So let's click up here, F4 to get the dollar sign in, F4. Now what it's going to do is just drag your formula, double click here, it drags your formula without changing the range, but changing the lookup value each time. Next up, we have the HLOOKUP, also known as the horizontal lookup. So what does this formula do? It horizontally looks below the lookup value. So here we have a table with employee IDs at the top, the name, department, and the salary. We can add in the employee ID here, and we want to then look up the name department and salary right here. As you can notice, we have a few things to watch out for. The text is not important, so we can ignore that. But text and number format is critical when you are doing lookup formulas. So what do we mean by this? If we look into the formula right here, we're going to construct it by H lookup. And we have the lookup value here. And once again, we have the table array, so we don't need to have the headers, but we need to include the item that we are looking for. So as we're looking for the name, we just want to go up to the second column. Let's comma, and the row index is, this would be number one, and this would be number two. Number two, and we want to have an exact match. So we type in a zero or a false there, press OK. But as you notice, we have an NA error here. What does this mean? 
can you see this little green triangle on the left side and up here as well? This shows us that we have an error and it can help you in the error, but it's a very simple thing. This is stored as a number, whereas these are stored as text. And that is super important, one of the errors to avoid in lookup formulas. As you can see, the little triangle here, when we click on the left, what does it say? Convert to number. So we can simply highlight all our data right here and convert them to a number. And as you see, the 107, now we have Grace here and we have the department right here. Now we still have an issue right at the bottom, which is now a ref error. What do we mean by this? The ref error comes when the reference is out of the range of the data. So if we look at the formula here, what have we done? We're looking up C10 and we're looking it up in this table right here, which is correct. However, if you look at the table the row index here we're typing in five and we've only selected four columns so once we just remove the five add four and we will get our salary right here so super important to watch out for all of these moving on to the infamous vlookup formula we have a table here with data in a vertical format and we want to have the product name and search for the stock. Now, a vertical lookup has the restriction that we need to have the lookup that we are looking up in the leftmost column, and the data that we want to return needs to be towards the right. Therefore, it's a vertical lookup. In this example, in a vertical lookup, if we put the product name right here, we will not be able to go backwards to look up the product ID. So simple VLOOKUP, let's go and type in a product name here. So let's type in BITE, SCAN, HAND, HELD, and we have the item. And now we want to scan for the stock on hand. So what we do is a VLOOKUP, open bracket, what's the value? We want to look up the product name. What's the table array? Now we don't need to select all of the table because we don't need the product ID. We are starting from the product name here and we are going to select up to the stock. Comma and the column index, this is known as one, this is two, this is three. So we want to return column number three. We type that in and we want an exact match, not a an approximate match. So we type in false or zero as the last argument in this formula, press OK, and then returns 45 stock in hand. Now with the exact match of a VLOOKUP, the name here for the lookup needs to match exactly. Now watch for some common errors. If we add a space right here, you'll see that we get an NA. So it's very important to make sure that we clean and trim all of the blank unprintable characters so that we have the exact match. Now we can get around this by using not an exact match, but we can use an approximate match. Now let's type in one instead of false and you can see that it's not the best because it's returned as 150, which is the first item. So it's not super accurate. However, let's type in a byte and see what happens. And there you go. So an approximate match is never really accurate. It just gives you maybe a picture. I wouldn't recommend using an approximate match to get accurate data because it's not 100% reliable. Now we have a way around the approximate match and that is by using a wildcard. Wildcard in Excel are either an asterisk, a tilde or a question mark and you can use your favourite one. So the way to do this is you come up to the formula. We have the lookup formula as G5 right here and what we want to do is add and after the cell and then double quote marks and add in your favourite. So let's type in an asterisk, comma, and now press enter. And you need to make sure that your range lookup has an approximate match right at the end, which is a one. 
press OK and now you see you have exactly 45. Let's see if this works. Let's type in a sky and see what we get. And there you go, we have 120. So this is a good way of making sure if you don't know the exact name, you are able to get the most accurate answer you have. Now let's have a look at another use case for VLOOKUP. This time we want to look at the month and we want to return the relative name as well as the sales that are made in that month by that person. So. What we need to do is go across me looking for March and once again let's type in equals VLOOKUP and this is the value that we want comma table array so we're starting off from here we can go all the way down but for the name we only need to use the first two columns so we can just go and use the two columns if we want to let's type that in and then we are going to use the column index number two and close our bracket right here we have John right here and we can follow on and just type in VLOOKUP, look for the month again, that's the unique value and look up sales in the fourth column. So table array, column index four and zero right here. Now here we have 15,000 that's made by John in March, perfect. So for example if we have looking at our months here, let's type in December and see what happens. Now that's not in our range, however it's not really an error, it's just not in our range. So to avoid that or to make your data look cleaner, we can use an if error to avoid this horrible looking NA. And how do we do that? We go back to the beginning of our formula, type in if error, open the bracket. Now within the bracket we go to the end of the VLOOKUP formula, comma, and now what it's saying is if there is an error, what do we want it to do? Here we want to type in not found and put that in double quotes. Anything that's in text should go into double quotes so that it comes up cleaner. So not found and let's close up the bracket right here. Close that and you have not found. Do the same thing with this if error, open the bracket close the bracket and you can write no data for example and you can close the bracket right here as well and that way you have something very clean. So let's try this with November and you can see that we should have the same thing. We have data not found and no data when we go back to May. See we can have our data now notice here as we always say lookup formulas don't look at the lower or upper case they are not case sensitive so we have our second option of a vlookup right here now my favorite xlookup which is the most versatile of the lookup formulas that you can look in either the left direction right direction and this is how we use it here we have a table with supplier details and we want to add a contact name here and I want it to return the supplier name and the phone number as well. Now the phone number can easily be done with a VLOOKUP because you have the name here and vertically you have to the right the phone number but the supplier name is contact name here and the supplier name is to the left and that's just not possible with the other lookup formulas so let's go here and type in Tom Smith so we have Tom Smith right here and what we want to do is add the X lookup formula. So the simple version of the X lookup formula equals X lookup, open bracket, go to the lookup value. Now we want to go to the lookup array. So we want to go to column C here with this range of cells, comma that, and where do we want to return it? We want it to return that. So now we can close it right here and that's the end of the formula. It has a number of other arguments that are just not necessary in this simple formula. They are optional and we'll see how to use those. Now close that and we get the supplier name right here. And with a phone number, we can simply do the same thing. We can do an XLOOKUP here or we could also use a VLOOKUP. But in this case, let's just type that. We go to our column here and our column here and close it up and we have our X lookup with the number right here. Now 
let's move on and see how to develop this formula for some used cases. Now with the next lookup, it combines a lookup with an if error to avoid writing a different formula inside it. So let's just have a look here. Now we're going to type in Tom over here and you can see we don't find any of those data in supplier name or phone number. So go across to the formula. Let's go to the formula and if you come to the end of the formula, it shows you if it's not found what you want me to do. So let's open up the double quotes and type in not found and let's close that and there you go. We can simply use the if error together inside the X lookup formula. Okay, now let's go back to our example and say that we want to use a wildcard character here. So we want to type in, for example, just Tom. We have a not found, but we want it to look for a wildcard. With that, simply go to the formula, go back to the lookup value, and once again, and double quotes, add in your favorite wildcard. So let's type in an asterisk here and make sure you close the double quotes and you have it here. Now, the important thing is after the not found, you need to give it a match mode. So when you come at this here, ask you for an exact match mode or number two for a wildcard character. Let's type that in and see what happens. There you go. It returns us the answer that we want, which is Alpha Inc. Now let's try that for example for Anne right here, see what happens. And there it returns a Delta for you. So. XLOOKUP is very comprehensive in combining if errors together with wildcards. The last most important thing about an XLOOKUP, it just doesn't look backwards, but it can also replace your HLOOKUP. So not only does it do vertical columns, it also does horizontal rows. Now here we have the same data with the supplier ID and the data on the left together with the data in a horizontal format towards the right. So what are we going to do? We are going to do a next lookup and we're going to look up the value here. So we want to return the supplier name for Anne, that is Delta. So where are we looking for this value Anne? And it's right here. And we are going to come up and do the return array, which is the supplier name above it. Close that and there you go. The reason that doesn't work is we don't have any wildcards, so we're just going to add an array here, and that is going to return us the right value. There we go, we have the delta right there. Hope that you've learned something new today, and if you did, I would appreciate a like and subscribe, and until next time, happy spreadsheeting.